Welcome here at the Gallery of Eduardo Secchi and uh, we're here in my new solo exhibition Between Belief and Delusions and I'm going to tell you a bit about the, the works and explain and show you and demonstrate the kinetic uh, pieces I made uh, especially for this show. The exhibition is a bit about my desire or my interest in the translation that uh, people make from something that's not uh, visual like faith and belief and we have the desire to make it uh, to, to visualize it by by matter by making objects and and shapes and patterns so at one point I was getting interested in how do we translate the things that are in our mind or that we receive by our senses and translate it in in matter in objects and I think when I was very young I was in church and I didn't understand what was happening, but I did see a lot of uh, things happening around me. I, I see the priest and I see the church and I was started to think about why is this priest uh, wearing uh, a certain kind of cloth or why does this church look the way it looks. So I, then at a certain point I started getting interested in um, the idea that there is something we cannot see and we even in science or in everything around us and we try to translate it into objects and this translation is something i'm interested in and what i try to do is use this vocabulary um, to make my own objects and by that questioning how uh, does it work how does this translation work if we want to see something that's very important why do we place it in a center or the question why do we make a, a, a building really high because maybe we try to feel uh, small or um, why are the patterns sometimes so complex um, so all these elements are used to I think in a way convince ourselves uh, of the, the things that we cannot experience or cannot see but only feel. So what you see here is a very large uh, pattern and if you look closely you can see that it's rotating. So the idea was to, to react on the idea to make a very complex big pattern that in a way you feel kind of small and because it's rotating it's hard to focus on all the, the elements. And in that way it becomes a bit a delusion, you know, you don't know where to look and in a way you're losing, uh, yeah, you're, you, you don't know how to react on it and I think that's interesting that in a way you try to relate to the object but it's difficult. So here we are in the second part of the exhibition and as you can see here is a freestanding sculpture, it's called the Planetary Chapel. And um, the idea about this, or this uh, sculpture is that um, when something is very important for us, um, it's most of the times it's uh, hard to reach, you know, it's difficult to, to enter. And then it becomes more special, that's an idea that's in our mind. So for this, in, for this sculpture you can see that there's an outside, but there's also an inside. By putting energy in the sculpture and winding the spring engine, um, it's able to open with one push on the button the mechanism will start and you will get a glimpse of um, a kind of holiness inside but it's also a, a kind of planetary so it's between uh, belief and science and it's something that's not reachable but it's just opens for you for a few seconds and then it closes again So as you can see inside there's a, a kind of spheres moving around and it, it uh, relates to the, to the planets of course or the planetary but it also refers to for example Solomon's temple which is a, one of the first um, religious places that was completely covered with gold.
With this sculpture you can see it's a, it looks like a small rose window, but nothing reveals that there's a mechanism beside, beside it. And um, by putting energy in the object, it will start moving and it becomes a kind of a delusion. So when I rotate this outside piece, the mechanism uh, will start rotating and the pattern becomes a kind of delusion. So here we are at the sculpture. The, at first sight it uh, looks like an uh, abacus and it's, uh, it refers to a mathematical uh, object, but it's a bit a combination between uh, a prayer wheel and a mathematical object. So there are more than 900 uh, spheres um, inside the small containers. And when I wind it up, they will start rotating. So I think it, exp it reveals a bit the, the combination be between something mathematical that can become uh, more than just uh, the rational, but it becomes a bit the prayer wheel. And it's a bit in between belief and, um, and, and science. So we're now in the third space and you can see here a, a large pillar and if you look closely you can see it's all made of um, a marbled clay and it refers to the, to the, the large prayer wheels that are being used in, um, in the religion and the thing that's interesting about it is that for me you can interact with the religious object. So, um, if you rotate, the, it becomes a kind of ritual by putting energy into the sculpture. And then all the separate parts will start rotating in opposite direction. So I think it's interesting that people can feel that they can interact with the object and become part of uh, the sculpture, but also in a way to, uh, it's about the, the way that people feel that they are part of the idea, of the thing that's behind, the idea behind it. So at the main wall, you can see a very large uh, round sculpture and it relates to the, to, the, to the glass windows that you can find in all religious places. And if you look closely and carefully, you can feel that there are a lot of, uh, you can recognize a lot of patterns that are being used uh, through the centuries uh, in religious places. And the clay is very important because you can feel that a lot of people have worked and there's a lot of labor in it. So within this small sculpture, you can, you can see it as an artwork, but for me, it's more like a religious object that's being used by people to have their, uh, to act a ritual. So you can imagine when you're going to a church, then you put a candle and yeah, people relate to, to their environment. And for this, you can imagine that people place a ball between the lines. So within the exhibition, I also made a few paintings and here you can see that there's a, a kind of landscape with a hose in it. So for me it's interesting because I think you can imagine that the landscape is filled with the water and in a way becoming a kind of godlike um, setting where the landscape is being created. So you see a very simple hose filling the water and it becomes a lake.